Hey, my name is Beatrice and I work as a nurse on a medical surgical unit. Um, typically the definition of medical surgical is you get a little bit of everything. You get your congestive heart patients, you get your um, post-cath patients, pneumonias, um, a lot of renal failures. It's a pretty much just a, a big combination of patients. My typical day starts from you know coming in, getting report from in between you no know, four to six patients on a on a good day four and a bad day six, <laughs> and you kind of learn about your patients through the report. You you learn how they were that evening. You learn the orders that you know written that day, what you kind of have to do, and it gives you a little image of what that day is going to be like for you and what's what's ahead. <laughs> um, Typically after report, you kind of you go in and you see your patients, you do your head-to-toe assessment, check all your systems, make sure everything's, you know, as you got a report because just because someone tells you something at 6 o'clock in the morning saying my patient was stable, they're fine, the way things work in the nursing field is you can walk into your patient's room and they cannot be breathing. So it's really important to make sure you do your first, you know, morning assessment and make sure everyone's okay and everything's stable with your patients. Um, typically hours, you know, we get, we get here at about 6.30 in the morning and then kind of get paperwork together in about 7-ish till about 8.15 you get report and kind of get your get your things together for, for your day and that kind of continues on until about 7.30 to 8.30 at night. If it's a really rough day, you know, there's been times we've, we've all kind of stayed here until about 9, <laughs> depending, because there's so much to do. You have um, paperwork or assessments, you have charting and you have just your patient care. You know, your patients don't just get medications, they get, um, you know, blood work done, they have new medications to hang, they have IV fluids. Sometimes the patient will pull out an IV, so you have to get a new IV. So it's, you know, it's very, very time management oriented, very task oriented. At the same time, you have to really meet the holistic needs of your patient. You have to make sure that emotionally they're okay, not just physically and not just medically. So it's, it's really involved, it's really busy, but it's it's great. And you know, with all these things going on, you have to kind of make sure that your stress level is at a minimum. Sometimes it can get crazy and your patients can one day all be kind of kind of bad and or totals to where you have to literally do everything for your patients because they're not able to move or do anything for themselves. So just it's important to make sure that you walk into the t t you know, work knowing that Today can be a really stressful day or today can be kind of an easier day, but either way it's going to be a good day. So pretty much to be a nurse, um, you can do two different tracks. You can either go and get your associates and get an RN, which um, allows you to go ahead and go into the practice, or you can get your four-year degree, which is your BSN, and that will also let you go ahead and, and, and um, get a job at a hospital. The two, or the big difference between the two is that with the BSN, you um, have more career mobility if you want to go to do things like quality, which deals with core measures and a bunch of different things that um, work with the intricacies of a hospital. But just, just to kind of get you in the door of working in a hospital, once you get your RN or your BSN, the next step is to take your NCLEX did your state licensing exam, which is really hard. <laughs> um, it's not be study, it really isn't. It's just it's a generalized exam that kind of covers everything you've learned. It's it's a randomized test. So you kind of just go in there and you take it and pretty much um, you have three chances to take it. If you fail your first time, you have to wait three months before you can reapply to take it again. And um, let's say in the event that you fail it three times in a row, then you actually have to apply to the state as, um, and have like an appeals process to see if you're eligible to take it again. And usually they're, they're, they're fairly lenient and they'll let you kind of go ahead and take that. Um, once you get your licensing done and everything's kind of, it's, it's really all downhill from there, everything's a little bit easier. You get your resume together. It really helps if you've done volunteer work um, within the hospital system or if you've worked as a tech, like a floor tech, because that kind of gives you uh, kind of like the, you put, put your foot in the door, it gives you the ability to say, you know, these people, they know me, they know I'm a good worker, I come into work on time, I'm never late, um, I show up to work, I don't, you know, call out. So it kind of helps you build rapport for when you're trying to get that nursing position. Something to really remember if you are thinking about going to the nursing field is there's so many really great rewards from it, not to mention the incredible amount of knowledge you're going to have that can not only help your patients, but you will instantly be the family doctor. 
If someone has a cold, if someone has anything going on, some kind of inflammation, they're going to be like, hey, I have this. So it's kind of nice to know that you have that, you have that intelligence, or you have the knowledge, or you have the ability to say, look, I don't know this, but I know somebody who does, or, or you can tell them where to go to gain the knowledge to help them. So it, it's great for your, you know, for your family. It makes you kind of feel really, um, really good. The other thing is that as hard as a job can be, as stressful as it can be, it's so incredibly rewarding to have that one patient who, you know, gives you a hug and says, thank you so much, you know, you were so great, or um, just little things like that, or just being able to sit with your patients in their rooms when you have kind of an easy day and just talk, just, just to sit and chat. And it was so great as we actually get a lot of elderly patients on our floor, and they are the best storytellers ever. And I, I can remember just sitting in patients' rooms and talking about like World War II and it's just crazy, but it's so much fun. And it's just nice um, to know that you're able to give your time to them and kind of give them a listening ear. Um, but with you know the good parts, there's also some bad parts. Definitely, in case you didn't know, you will have to be here during hurricane season or any kind of disaster. If there is a flood, you will have to be at the hospital and you will be sleeping on the floor, more than likely, or maybe not. But it's something to consider that, you know, if there's some kind of disaster, you're going to have to be away from your families. You're going to have to be dedicated to your hospital and your patients. And if that's not something you're comfortable with, because some people aren't, um, it's really, really important to kind of think about your personal beliefs and your values on that and what you're willing to do for other people. Um, another aspect to think about is not every day is going to be a day that involves passing meds and just doing your basic orders. You know, there's days where a person stops breathing on you and it's you know something you would see on a show where you're you know doing chest compressions you're pushing drugs and meanwhile families in the background ba breaking down the door to try to get in because their family members having their chest pounded on so if you have to be able to emotionally handle the fact that not only are you trying to help this patient in the bed but you have a whole crowd of family members who are wanting an answer from you because you're the last person who saw their family member alive so you have to be able to deal with that. That doesn't always happen all the time. Thankfully on my floor it does not happen all the time. But it has happened and it does happen. It's just it's the reality of the profession that you chose to work in. It's the reality of sometimes, you know, everything works great and you have a wonderful day and your patients are fine and you get home early and it's just absolutely fantastic. But there's days where it's not like that and that's just you know, something you have to think about, and also thinking about how well you deal with stress. That is such a huge, huge thing to consider. If you are a person that does not deal with stress well, or you don't have that outlet, think about the worst parts of, the, of this career and think it might not be for you, because everyone on, the, on our floor, on any floor, in any hospital, I guarantee you has some stress outlet, whether it be a hobby, or working out, or something, you have to have it, because it will, your stress builds, especially on hard days where you have codes and where you, you know, people don't really um, make it through. So just consider both aspects and really think about something that you want to do. Something you really should um, think about if you really want to do nursing, if nursing is something that you think is for you, is best advice is volunteer. Whether it be at a nursing home or at a hospital, Definitely, definitely volunteer for at least a year, not just in one place, go, different, go to different areas. Um, that way you will get a really great idea of what it's like to really be a nurse because you're there working with them side by side, especially if you go in and you say, hey, I'm volunteering because I'm thinking about you know pursuing a nursing career later. Any nurse, hands down, will take you under their wing and show you um, exactly what it's like. They'll give you a better idea than someone who's just there to have a good time or just to kind of get some volunteering hours in. If you let them know this is something that you were really passionate about, they're going to show you because they want you to be prepared. They want you to know what you're getting yourself into. It's, it's the worst thing to go through school two years or four years, go into a profession and be like, oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> you don't want to do that at all. Um, if, if at all possible, you want to avoid that. So definitely volunteer at a hospital, volunteer at a nursing home, see what it's like, not only for the nursing aspect, but because nursing is such a huge field. You have gerontology, cardiology, um, med surge, like what I do, um, critical care. You have so many different avenues of nursing that are just all there for you. If you want to be a mother baby nurse or you want to be critical care, it's great to go ahead and kind of hone in on those things to know, 
okay, I want to go through school. I might get a tech job at a mother baby unit. So whenever I get done with school, I have a higher chance of being, um, you know, put on that unit. Those little things to remember um, when you're thinking about doing the nursing profession. Also thinking about your stress level. Think about is it really something that you want to do and why are you doing it? Are you doing it because everyone's like, oh, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to get all kinds of money and it's going to be awesome. It's not necessarily the case. It is. I mean, like you, it, you it's a great financial um, like stability you get with nursing. It's a great career you have with nursing. But if you go into it for the money, I guarantee you, you will hate your job every single day. You will not like it ever. You have to go into nursing because you have a passion to care for people, whether they get on your last nerves or they're the sweetest little lambs on earth. You have to want to be there for the patients, not for the paycheck at the end of the day. It has to be a passion, not just um, something to check off the list and say, I'm a nurse and now I have money. It's not necessarily the case and it's not how you should treat your patients. It's not what they came here to receive medical attention, but also to receive your empathy because you're here for them. Not to, you walk in and be like, got my paycheck, clocking out. No, not what it's about. To think about those things, and you'll be great nurses, yay. <laughs>